Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a nice day. It is Ember Power here with another budget deck. This time we're going to be looking at the kind of forgotten about tech card that is more than capable of finding its own in the meta, primarily because of its, well, the fact that it's so darn cheap and the fact that it can quite comfortably take on some of the bigger players. It's got a pretty favorable matchup against Picarom and Eternatus, which we'll go into more in a second. And as I've found in previous games, can actually do pretty well against the likes of Reshizard and even ADP, which surprised me. I didn't think I'll be very good against ADP being a one prize deck and everything, but surprisingly enough, this one does seem capable, largely thanks to its secret text, which we'll talk about in a minute, and the fact that it can just outboard ADP, because with this deck, it's, it's got a distinct advantage over a lot of other one prize decks, and that distinct advantage is, one, you only need to play eight Pokemon, and two, you only need to ever really have two Pokemon out at a time, which is where things become really consistent, because it means we can actually have room for trainers such as Green's Exploration, which can essentially help us set up the entire board all the time. And this also means we can have room for Crushing Hammers, because usually with one prize decks, you would think, oh yeah, I have no room because I've spent all my spaces on rare candies, jirachis, all the rest of it. Well, no, <laughs> you can have room for crushing hammers, you can have different energy, you can have tool cards, even stadiums, some decks do struggle for that. You even have boss's order, which I don't usually bother with. So, you know, definitely a lot of, you know, very consistent stuff that allows us to use this attacker. So let's actually talk about the crap himself. Carbonable is a card from Unbroken Bonds, so kind of all these days. 140 HP, retreat cost of 4, you could buff this up with buff padding, which is quite nice. If you want to have 190 HP, which isn't terribly bad, definitely consider it. Weakness to Psychic is a bit of a pain for Dragapult, because it means they get 1 in KOs. But to be honest, it also means that Horror Energy doesn't do anything for them in that matchup. So if you Crushing Hammer away their basic energy, they're stuck with Horror Energy, it's not really doing much, etc, etc. Fight Alone is uh, where it's at, basically. Now, we do actually play Fighting Energy, so you can use Magnum Punch if you want cheeky KOs on Dedenes. But Fight Alone, you'll be using for the vast majority of games. And it does 30 damage, and then if you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, this attack does 50 more damage for each Pokemon fewer you have in play. So that's kind of wordy, but basically, the gist of this deck is, the bigger your opponent's board, the smaller your board, the more damage you will do. So this is why this is like pretty ridiculous against Eternatus. Not only are you hitting for weakness, but they will have like a, a five, six sided board usually. And that's just the bench. <laughs> and then you've just got two Pokemon in play because you only ever want to have one Crabromble in the active and then one Crab Roller on the bench or potentially one Crabromble on the bench as well. You don't necessarily need two of them. Now I'm playing this Crab Roller mainly for the Knuckle Blast attack. It's not especially amazing. But it does say 30 damage, and if you have more prize cards than the opponent, this attack does 60 more. So it just does flat 90, it's quite nice. But that's basically the gist of the deck. We're trying to do mass damage. Now usually, because it's 50 plus 30, you'll be able to do at least 180 the vast majority of the time. Which is quite nice, because that's a two shot in every VMAX automatically. And of course, you can just sort of power your way through most of the attacks. It's also a lot more consistent than most other one prize decks, which means... You know, you can afford to just smash them apart, basically. And you're also 140 HP, so you're out of the range of Exadrill, which is pretty nice as well. So I definitely think there's um, a lot of untapped potential in this deck list. So let's move on to the card counts. We have 4 Crushing Hammer, which is quite nice, just for discarding energy. It's pretty good. Um, there's been loads of special energy running around, and there's going to be more in the next set. So I figure Crushing Hammer definitely worth having. One Evolution Incense, this is just one off because we have Green's Expiration, so we can Green's Expiration for an Evolution Incense if need be. We have 4 Great Ball, which is the primary way of searching out our Stage 1 crafts. We do only play 4 main attackers, so we have to play 2 Ordinary Rod. Back when this deck first became a thing, in my opinion, um, you would play Rescue Stretcher, which was a far superior card. But this just seems to be doing fine, so not too worried about it. We have a Pal Pad just to shovel back supporters because we don't play Eldegoss. Um, Poke Gear because people usually say if you don't play Jirachi, try and play Poke Gear. It's just a nice way of guaranteeing which supporter you get. Two Pokemon Catcher because sometimes V Maxes are just too chanky. And so what you might find with this deck is it's better to hunt down Crobats and Dedenes 
Yes, it does lower your damage output, but remember Crobat and Dedenne are weakness to fighting, so we literally only need like two more fewer Pokemon than they have, and then we get a one-hit KO. Hopefully that makes sense. Four Quick Ball, just to search for multiple crabs. Three Fighting Dojo, this was originally a two of or a one of, but then I decided to bump up to three because even if we discard like a Chaotic Swell, we want another one of these dojos to, you know, abuse the fact that we can potentially do hundred, like 40 more damage, should say, which is obviously just quite nice. It's a nice buffer and a nice addition to attach because obviously we're not going to be able to play a Twin NG or a Triple E every turn. Now, you could play four Triple E, but I prefer playing Capture Energy instead, which just adds a little bit more consistency, technically acts as an S ball, and four Basic Fighting Energy just helps with the dojo. Um, one boss's order, again, you could go to two, but I've found the two boss's order is just a bit clunky in the hand. Four greens expiration, kind of like the key card in the deck. Two copies of Marnie to thin down those massive hands that Welder and Zashian can build up. Four research for consistency. Two giant bomb, the sacred tech. So let's take advantage of that good old power creep. So a lot of decks, primarily Eternatus and ADP, can actually smack you for northwards of 180 damage. Well, that's helpful because they can just take 100 damage back to the face. So literally an ADP Zashin, Zashin hits you for 230, they take 100 to the face, then you smack them for a lot more and potentially just take a 1-hit KO. Definitely helps if they had a giant cloak attached to them as well, so definitely worth considering. I would play 4 of these, but I, I only have 2 right now, so I'm playing Vitality Band instead. Could replace it with Buff Padding if you want an alternative, but it's quite nice just allowing you do 10 more damage. Can help with numbers. Then of course we just explain the energy, so... Very fun deck, very easy to play, very cheap as well, like you could just